Good morning, welcome to Hoaxie Gardens and Homestead. You know, eggs, eggs are an amazing thing and we often take them for granted. And um, have you ever wondered how a hen can lay an egg every other day? I mean, every day, they, most of them seem to lay an egg and why some are brown, some are white, some are green. Um, how do you tell if the egg is good or not? I mean, are these things you wonder about? Let's see if we can answer some of those questions. Okay, the female chickens are called pullets for their first year until they begin to lay their eggs. And for most breeds, that's around 20 weeks and a typical age for the first egg. Some breeds lay eggs daily, while others lay one every other day. Some lay them, uh, you know, once or twice a week. Now, egg development and the laying process, a female chick is born with thousands of tiny little old ones, which are undeveloped yolks. And once she reaches maturity, an ovum is released into the canal and it begins its journey of development. <clears throat> and at any given time, a productive hen will have several eggs uh, at different stages in her reproductive system. Unlike us humans, where we release one egg and we grow that baby, we have that baby, now sometimes two, and when but, uh, normally it's one or two, but chickens can have a dozen going on at one time <clears throat> at different stages. And um, when it's first discharged, it's a tiny little yolk, and as it travels down, it gets larger and larger, and then it is surrounded by what we call the uh, egg white, and then it'll be surrounded by a membrane, and um, as it gets further down, it'll be surrounded by the shell. And um, then the last thing that happens is the color of the egg. later and later, 24 hours, so the next day it's going to be an hour later, and then an hour later, then an hour later, and then when it gets to where that 25 hours is up at night, chickens do not lay eggs at night, <clears throat> so um, there will not be an egg, they will wait till the next day, so they will actually skip that day, so they do get a rest. Although I'm going to sit this down. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a person who talks with their hands, so... <laughs> Now, eggshell production, it drains the calcium from the hen's body. The comb, the wattles, the legs, the earlobes, they'll fade in color as calcium is leached out. So the calcium must be replenished within your hens. Um, you can do that with a food that is high in calcium or with um, oyster shell, which is what I do. Well, actually I do both, but the oyster shell, they always have access to oyster shell. Now, young pullets, they may lay uh, malformed eggs before they get established, and that's totally normal, so don't freak out. Now, older hens can uh, occasionally lay abnormal eggs due to age, stress, or illness. Now, pullets, the first ones produced by the pullets are usually smaller um, than the rest, and as they get older, they'll get bigger. Sometimes you'll have an oops egg and it's a tiny little egg, it quickly passes through, and there's no yolk, there's, there's nothing. Sometimes you can get a shellless egg. Um, now, sometimes that just happens because it went through really fast, but usually that means they're not getting enough calcium in their diet and you need to increase their calcium. Sometimes you'll get a double yolked egg. Now, this egg will usually look larger than any other eggs. I always know when I get a double yolk egg. It doesn't happen too often, but it has happened a few times. And you always know this is a double yolk egg because it's a lot larger than the other. And it's just because they uh, went through the, that process close together and were wrapped up together. So that's, that's why that happens. Now you wonder about... Um, the size of the shell. Um, let's see if I've got a good example here. Uh, 
um, the size. You can see this one's smaller. This one is my Banty. This one is um, my Easter Egger. Um, and this one here, even larger than my Easter Egger, that is my Americana. So the size of your eggs, that is going to depend on the breed. That's why you get so many different sizes. Banties are going to be smaller and then other breeds, their, skin, their size of their shells will be according to the characteristics of that breed. Um, where do they get their colors? Because um, there are white, there's a light tan, a dark tan, a light brown, a dark brown, a brown with uh, spots, uh, there's green, there's blue, there's some that have a pink hue to them. Um, all kinds of different colored uh, chicken eggs. And where do they get that color? It's the breed. Uh, my Easter eggers lay a green. My Americanas, um, they're kind of a green, but they have that blue hue to them. So each one of your chickens will lay a different color if they're a different breed. They're, each breed will lay a different color. Now chickens are funny little things. Um, there'll be one hen in a nest laying an egg and here comes girlfriend and she just hops up there with her. Sometimes you could have three chickens in one one nest laying eggs. And um, why they do that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but they do. And uh, you can have eight nests in there and they'll use just a couple of those. So don't feel like you have to have one for every chicken. You don't. Um, in fact, I would say if you have eight chickens, three nests would probably do you good and because uh, they will get in there together. Now, um, <clears throat> when they go to lay their eggs, everybody will know because they're going to announce it with a cackle that they're so proud. I'm going to lay an egg. I'm laying an egg. I just laid an egg. <laughs> they're so cute the way they announce it to the world that they're laying an egg. They're proud of what they're doing. Another thing that they're going to do is, if you have free-ranging uh, chickens like I do, you'll be walking around, you'll go out behind the barn, or in my case, the storehouse, and you'll find a nest of eggs, and uh, which I've done. And you don't know if they're good or not. Or uh, sometimes, like in the heat that we had, the 110 degrees, and maybe uh, you weren't you were sick or something and you weren't able to get out and get the eggs for a couple days and you don't know if those eggs are good do not throw those eggs away I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you how to tell if your eggs are good uh, or if they're not so then you'll know if you can keep them or throw them away don't want to waste good eggs these girls work hard for those eggs so you don't want to uh, lose those eggs another thing is a myth that um, all the protein of the egg is in the egg white. There's a big egg white thing going on right now. Egg white sandwiches and uh, egg white uh, scrambled eggs, but it's just the egg whites. And that's a myth. Yes, 60% of the protein is in the egg white, but 40% of it is in the egg yolk. So this is a power pack. There's like 3.7 grams in the egg white and 2.7 in the egg yolk. So combined, that is a protein powerhouse. And we need pro, our bodies need protein to survive. So um, that's a great place to get some protein. So don't buy into the myth that egg whites are healthier or that they have all the protein anyway, because that's not true. The whole egg is healthy. Um, when it comes to things like this is healthy, that is healthy, this is healthy, that is healthy, if you're hearing it from the government, just let it go in one ear and out the other. Because how many times have they changed our food pyramid? What they're teaching in the schools now is not what they taught me in the schools. Now, I realize it's been a long time <laughs> since I was in school, but if that was the way you should eat, it should maintain and be the same. But no, they've changed it several times over that. Um, look at what they did with uh, the coconut oil. You know, they it, it was healthy for you for many, many years, and then all of a sudden it was bad for you. We've got to get it out of the theaters. That's why our popcorn tastes so good 
was the coconut oil. It hasn't been the same since they removed it. And um, so now all of a sudden, oh, coconut oil is really good for you again. You know, and it's the same with the eggs. They're high in cholesterol. Well now, you know, so you quit eating them. Only eat the egg white, that's where the protein is anyway. Leave out the yolk, it's high in cholesterol. Well now they're coming out and they're saying, well, the eggs weren't as high in cholesterol as, as we thought. So, you know, you, you gotta be careful where you're getting your advice from. So who do you listen to? I would listen to nature. Nature gives us all these gifts, and if we just take care of nature so that nature can give us healthy gifts, you know, you, you don't strip the soil so that there's no minerals in it, because if you do, there's not going to be that much nutrition in our foods, but if you take care of your soil, you grow your food, the nutrition's going to be good in it, and you're going to be getting good nutrition. Grow your own, have your own chickens, have your own eggs. You know, um, now, I don't eat my chickens. I don't have a problem with anybody who does, but I don't do that. Starving, yes, I would, but uh, they're going to be giving me eggs every day, so why would I be starving, right? So, um, look at nature for what is healthy, what is good, because nature's not going to steer us wrong, and nature's not going to change its mind. So I keep getting asked, how do you know if an egg is good or not? Um, the way you know is if it's good, it'll sink to the bottom in a glass of water. If it's not, it'll float. I did leave some eggs out in the heat for a few days so that I could show what I'm talking about. This egg is good. It sinks right down to the bottom. Take this one out. Take this egg. It floats up to the top. That egg is not good. One more. It floats up to the top. So if you leave your eggs out a little too long and you have a question or maybe you found them in the spot that they're not normally at and you don't know how long they've been there because our chickens do have a way of just going wherever they want, um, hiding their eggs, especially if they're getting broody. But anyway, you find these eggs and you're not sure if they're good or not, this is the way you can test to see if your eggs are good or if they're bad simple test easy to do so there you have it now you know how to tell if your eggs are good if they're bad um, you know how they get to you and to your table um, you know the little quirks that the chickens have and uh, you know why the colors are what they are and why the size is what they are those eggs so um, enjoy them and enjoy your chickens enjoy your garden and most of all enjoy your day thank you for joining me if you haven't subscribed already please do give me a thumbs up if this video was informative to you and I will see you later bye bye